Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome once again to Insights into Teens. This is episode 43, uh, Fall and Winter Activities. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my brilliant and still beautiful co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing, Maddie, now that we're back up and running here? Pretty good, same as I normally am. Uh, so I do have to apologize. We had some technical difficulties and some software issues and buttons not working. And yeah. A lot of moving parts here to, to make the, the podcast go. So uh, we usually, I check everything beforehand and everything was working until we went live and then everything wasn't working all of a sudden. Yeah. So... Murphy's Law, I guess. Yeah. So anyway, this episode, we are going to be talking about a less serious, less hard-hitting topic. Uh, have a little fun today. Um, we're going to be talking about what we do in the fall and the winter and the cold weather. Uh, we do live in New Jersey, so we do get some cold weather here, and we tend to get some uh, some snow from time to time, which is kind of fun. Uh, so we'll be talking about, uh, what we do in the cold weather outside. We'll talk about some fun indoor activities to do. Uh, we'll be talking about some activities that teach, teach life lessons. Cause we're always trying to, uh, advance ourselves somewhat. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll sum up with, uh, what to do over the winter and fall winter, what we do over the winter and fall and how we celebrate the holidays and, uh, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. So let's have a little bit of fun. Let's cross our fingers and hope everything continues to work as it's supposed to. Yep. And uh, we'll get into it. We'll know as soon as we push the transition button here, because that's where uh, everything exploded last time. Here we go. And wish us luck, everyone. Hey, there we go. So today we are looking at uh, some activities that we get from a website called verywellfamily.com we've used in the past. And I just want to run down this list, find out if you've done any of this and your thoughts on those that you have done. And if you haven't done any of these or some of these, um, why and would you be interested in doing them? Okay. Okay. So the first one on the list is go ice skating. Have you ever gone ice skating? Uh, no. I actually don't know how to do regular skating, and I'm I've never really gone ice skating. Would you want to do ice skating? Uh, I really don't know because I can't. It's hard for me. I think it would be hard for me to keep my balance, and I'm pretty sure I just fall on my butt all the time. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm not very good at that. Yeah. Number two we have on the list is go sledding. Do you, have you ever gone sledding? Not that I know of, no. Not that you know of. It's not really something you accidentally do, sweetie. I don't think I've ever done it. Is it something you'd want to do? Yeah, actually. So sledding used to be a huge uh, winter thing for, for me and my friends. Used to love doing it. We'd walk all over the place and... You know, we, we'd walk hours to go sledding on good hills and stuff like that as kids. Um, so Sam sledding, your brother, we, we used to take him sledding in, in Belmar over by the hockey rink. He used to have fun with that. Uh, so who knows? Maybe this year will be your big chance to go sledding this year. Yeah. Um, so the next one has to do with a movie we're going to go see this weekend. Have you ever built a snowman? Or do you want to build a snowman? I can't remember the line. <laughs> 
Do you want to build a snowman? Do you want to build a snowman? Have well, you we, ever done it? Well, yes. I've actually bu built a snowman before, and we've actually built one together. Yes, we have. We had the one, the really big one we built that lasted like a week out there in, in the sun when it got warm. Yeah. <coughs> Building snowmen's always fun. The tough part is making sure you get packing snow because if the snow's too yeah. uh, too cold and too dry, it doesn't pack very well. Yeah. How about building a snow fort? Have you ever built a snow fort? I've actually tried one time when I was like in the snow. I was it was like perfect moldable snow, and I once decided, hey, why not I build like a like an igloo or something? So I started like building up a brick. And I didn't really finish it because I had to go back inside and it was kind of getting cold, so. Yeah, that takes a while to do, um, especially when you're building it from hand like that. As a kid, we used to kind of cheat. We um, we lived right next to um, a supermarket, and uh, when we used to get a lot of snow, they'd bring the front end loaders in to plow the, uh, the parking lot, and they'd push it all off onto the site, and they'd pile it up. So we would get to, like eight, 10 feet high. And then what we would do was we'd climb up on top of it and we would dig our fort out of the top ridge of the snow mound. That sounds so, awesome. Yeah. So you, you're kind of taking it away. It was a lot easier than trying putting it together. So yeah. made, made making the fort easier. How about a snowball fight? Have you ever had a snowball fight? I think a couple of times with you guys, I would, well, while we were working, I'd like throw snowballs at you guys and then you'd eventually join in. Yeah. While we were out shoveling snow, we would, uh, we'd play around like that. Yeah. It's tough because, because a lot of times it's really difficult to, to pack snow, uh, with gloves on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I usually, when I would have snowball fights, I wouldn't wear gloves because the heat on my hand would actually melt the snow. So oh, it was wow. easier to form. Uh, the problem is your hands get cold really fast that way. Yeah. How about go on a winter hike? Have you ever done that in the snow, just gone off and walked? Well, I've walked, but like, I can remember I would walk in the backyard just because I love the fact that my that the f snow was so deep that it would sink my that my feet would just sink into yeah, it. Yeah. And the very next day when it snowed again, I would just see like sm like footprints not even half at the point like it was full It'd be like little over dimples the head. Yeah, yeah yeah like where if it if i was actually quite light and i was just walking on it yeah um we i used to do that i used to be the one when it, when it would snow i would just go out and walk and I know. uh as a kid i i you know being a star wars fan i pretend like i was on hawk you know and you're out walking so especially when it is snowing um because the thing that's that's neat about snow is the acoustics are different, so everything sounds differently because I know. the snow absorbs the sound. I know, like it sounds more muffled than it normally does. Yeah, it's and pretty I, neat. Yeah, and it's also and it's always like nice, like when you wake up and you're expecting a regular day of school, but you heard that it might snow. You look out and you just see a fresh plow of snow. N knowing you don't have school as part of it, but just seeing the fresh blanket of snow is also nice. Yeah. Thing. Well, see, and when, when I was a kid, like nowadays, when it's going to snow, your school tends to cancel school the night before, and you already know, so you can sleep in or whatever. Yeah. As a kid, they didn't do that for my school. So we would get up at like 5 o'clock in the morning, and the news broadcast didn't have school closings. You'd have to listen to the news station on the radio, and... They called out numbers. So you'd listen for your school. You had a three-digit number for your school. And they would start with different states or different counties, and they would go through the numbers there. And you were sitting on the edge of your seat waiting for them to call your school to say that you were closed so that you could go out and play in the snow. Yeah. So there was this sense of anticipation that you guys don't actually you know, wind up getting these days. Yeah. So the next one is kind of like uh, – uh, sledding, but this is a little more formal. Snow tubing. Have you ever gone snow tubing? No, I don't think I have. So snow tubing, they do a lot at um, ski resorts. Uh, when we took the um, trip up into the Poconos and we stayed at the, um, I think it was called the Chateau, was the resort we stayed at. It's right at the back of Camelback Mountain. So the, the skiing is up on the mountain where it's real real steep up there. 
and then the snow tubing is further down so it's not as steep but it's a lot more comfortable than trying to go sledding too and it's usually a little more organized and mm. and not as crowded okay shoveling snow now now their instance here says so shoveling snow for someone in need have you shoveled snow before let's start with that Yes, and I can remember I actually pulled a muscle once when I was just shoveling snow. It, yeah, that can happen. And I can also remember one time when we were shovel shoveling snow. You picked, when I was really young, you picked me up and threw me into the snow, and I basically just had a little hut in there. That's Yeah, that was neat because it was so deep. It was like, I don't know, three feet deep at that point, and we tossed you in in your snowsuit, and like you just sunk right down. Yeah. That was funny. Uh, as a kid... Um, that used to be a way for us to make money. Um, so whenever it would snow, we would go around and we would shovel people out or shovel people's walkways. And, uh, you know, it was hard work, but by the end of the day, we could make, you know, a couple hundred dollars doing it. So it was, it was good work. Nice. The next thing on the list is go winter camping as a family to learn survival skills. Have you ever gone camping at all? No. No. I'm not an outdoor person. Yeah, me either. If you went camping, would you want to do it in the winter? Probably, because there's less bugs and... That's a good point. And it's not as muggy out. That is a good point. Uh, I'm not much of a winter person. I certainly wouldn't want to go camping like in the snow or anything like that. That's probably a little extreme for me. Yeah. Uh, as much as I like the cold, I prefer the uh, the comfort of being indoors. Yeah. Uh, what's next? So hold a bonfire and let your teen invite friends over. So we've never done a bonfire at home, um, but we do have attended bonfires. Do you remember the last bonfire we, we went to? No. What was it? Remember when we went to uh, Shady Brook and uh, we toasted marshmallows by the fire? Oh yeah. We did it there. We did a, we remember we toasted marshmallows down at Smithville too. Yeah. So that's kind of, they're not big bonfires. They're like little campfires. Ah. But yeah, same sort of principle. Uh, how about stargazing? Have you ever gone stargazing? No, not really. Oh. Winter is usually the best time to go stargazing. And that's mainly because in the winter, you don't have as much haze in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So if you go and look up, you'll see so many more stars. Like if you go outside right now and take a look, you'll see so many more stars in the sky than you normally do. Mm. So that's a fun one. But we have done stargazing. Really? Actually, we did one of the really cool place. Remember when we were at uh, Disney and we were sitting in the stands waiting for the show at Animal Kingdom, the water show to start? Oh, yeah. We did stargazing there. Oh. And we had our little app on our phone that showed us oh, where the yeah, constellations that's what were. You were referring to. Yeah. So, and the last one that we have here, and this is kind of a cool one, is host a snow sculpture competition. Oh. Have you ever done snow sculpting? I know you've done a snowman. No, I've never actually sculpted something out of the snow except for balls and cubes and stuff. Well, I guess, you know. Shapes is important. You have to learn shapes. Yeah. Um, I did, but it wasn't a competition. You know, when I was younger, uh, my friends and I, we, we were going to make a snowman. And to be honest with you, we didn't know how. So we started, you know, like, we knew how to roll the ball around and stuff. And we rolled a really big base of a ball because we, you know, we're like, oh, we're going to make a huge one. Well, when we went to make the second one, in order to make it in proportion to the first, it had to be pretty big. Well, it was so big we couldn't lift it. So we rolled it next to it. And then we were playing around and we said, well, you know what? That kind of looks like Jabba the Hutt with the two balls next to each other. So we bought a, brought a whole bunch more snow in and we actually spent about three or four hours crafting a life-size version of Jabba the Hutt out of snow. Yeah, I remember you told me this story. And it was in the middle of a field right next to the road, and everybody who drove by were, like, amazed at the size of this thing and, and how well it was made. And that one lasted, oh, man, that, that must have lasted, like, three weeks in the in that winter. Wow. Um, so that was a lot of fun doing that. 
So that's some of the things that we do. What are, what are some of the things that you do that aren't on this list in the winter outside? Well, occasionally I would flop into the snow. Snow flopping is one thing. Snow angels, right? Yeah, I try to do them, but every time I do, they always fail because I try to get up and I'm like, oh, darn, I'm stuck to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything else I ever do in the snow? Um, Not in the snow necessarily, but outside in the wintertime. Do you play in the leaves when the leaves fall? Well, I, u- I definitely know I used to do that. Like, I would rake the leaves just to jump into them. Yeah, we've done that. I remember doing that. We did that up at uh, Grammy's the one day. Mm-hmm. Mommy was in the house cleaning stuff up, and we were outside, and we raked the leaves, and you were out there playing in the big pile there. <laughs> what else have we done in the, in the fall and winter? Um, we've done our um, pumpkin picking. Yeah. We do that. Uh, we've done apples. What other fruits have we done? Um, uh, I, think it was, I think we've only done apples and, and pumpkins. Yeah. Uh, we would go to up the Shady Brook. Yeah. So the, the festivals that they would do up there, they do the, the um, fall festival where they do the Halloween stuff, which is which is really cool. Yeah, and they also have, like, the lights set up for Christmas, and that's where you can, like, go and... Um, yep, and we'll, we'll wind up doing that if not this weekend probably next weekend yeah so lots of cool stuff to do in the fall and winter no reason to be cooped up in the house all the time yeah so we, we do try to make the most of it fall is my favorite time of year is it your favorite time of year honestly um i've real i've definitely come a liking to fall before i didn't really like it because i would always get stuffy in the fall yeah. now i've noticed i really don't get that much that stuffy it's only really like a couple times at night and it's not even like in a complete pattern i've actually started to like fall because the weather there is perfect plus it has my birthday and two and two pretty cool holidays that's good. You know, having your, you know, the season of your birthday, the season that you like is always good. Yeah. I love the smell of fall. Yeah. You know, with that, the smell of the leaves and driving around and seeing the, the changing colors of the leaves. I guess, you know, you don't get that all over the, the country or all over the world, but up in the Northeast here, that's always a big thing going for a drive in the country and, and just seeing the, the beautiful colors and. The smell and the crispness in the air. Plus, I really like the combination of the colors. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's let's come back and we'll talk about uh, some indoor activities that we do in the fall. So, the first thing that we talk about here that they talk about in their list is learn how to do a new craft Every week. Now, I don't know if we do it every week, but we do tend to get a little bit more crafty in the fall and winter just because the weather is a little bit rougher on us. Um, Have you done any crafts so far this season? Do we have any plans to do crafts? Talk a little bit about that or even your artwork. Well, um, I can definitely say um, it's always nice during the fall or winter or any time really for me to just like take out a pen and a pencil and just start sketching something. Yeah. Um, I definitely know that I like making characters who wear warm clothes like sweaters and things. And hoodies. And hoodies, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Well, and you did get a lot of uh, art material for your birthday. Have you started yeah. with any of that stuff? Well, I definitely started using the 3D pen you guys gave me. I'm actually working on one of the canvases. It's a special surprise for you. You don't get to see it yet. Okay. Um. So, yeah. Um. Very cool. I'm also actually making a brand new character that's, act- like, I had asked someone earlier today, like, what should I draw? And they told me, like, draw something of a skeleton. And I decided to make a, a person in a skeleton costume. Okay. And that's kind of my thing. Like, if you tell me to draw a certain animal or anything like that, I'll always make it into some type of human. Like, I made the one, per- like, when Mommy suggested, well, I think it was either, y- I think it was you who suggested me to do the sloth. Yeah, I said sloth. Yeah, and, like... We had a whole discussion on how it would look, and, like, I actually have most of it done. It's, like, it's sort of like 
a college student. Um, she has a really baggy hoodie holding box. She, like, her hair's a bit messy. Um, she's also wearing a hood with a little sloth. All right. Well, you know, we are planning on doing a podcast to highlight some of your artwork coming up. So let's hold on to it for that. And we can, we can pull it out for that. Cool. So the next thing they have here is cook a meal as a family with each member in charge of a different course. How well do you think that? Because I know you're cooking already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if the audience is aware of that, but you, you cook dinner one or two nights a week now. How do you think it would work out if a different family member was in charge of a different course? Um, I definitely, th I think it would be kind of good because you can get like, everyone has a different cooking style and... Um, and people like, you know, someone like me has no style. Cooking. <laughs> yeah. So getting different dishes made from different people can actually kind of like be a really cool experience. And that's something we'll actually talk about uh, later on in the show when we talk about how we celebrate Thanksgiving. too. Mm, okay. Uh, let's see. Read a book every week. Now, I, I don't know if you're going to get through a whole book in a week, yeah. but, um, do you find that you read more in the winter, the fall and winter months than you do the rest of the year? Actually, no, because I have summer reading and that's like the main time when I read. <laughs> so you read less. You only read when it's compulsory reading and you have to do it. Uh, yeah. I mean, sometimes I do occasionally read but i don't really do it too often well and nobody's judging so don't you know you don't have to get yeah let's just say i'm it. not a bookworm i really only read when i'm told to read and you know and that's your preference there's nothing wrong with that uh, i tend to read recreationally and, and even educationally i read too to keep up on things um, but i think i find myself reading more in the winter uh, than any other time of year, unless I'm walking. That's the other thing. Like, I walk more in the spring and summer. In the colder months, I don't walk as much, especially, like, if I'm inside walking on the treadmill. Yeah. So I don't read as much, obviously. And when I say read, I mean listen to audiobooks. Yeah. So that kind of qualifies as reading. Sure. We'll go with um, that. So they talk about joining a book club. So obviously, if you're not a big reader, joining a book club's probably not for you. Yeah. Uh, but joining a book club is kind of a cool thing. Uh, mommy's in a book club, so yep. her and her friends and get together. Us. Well, I don't know if she abandons us, but she like doesn't hang out. With us. She goes off, you know, a couple times a month, and they, you know, go over the book and they turn it into a learning experience, and it's an enrichment experience for her. So she finds it very rewarding, and I think that's kind of cool. Uh, how about indoor water parks? That's another suggestion to do in the, in the winter. You've done those, haven't you? I've done a couple, yeah. Do you enjoy going to indoor water parks? Yeah, I actually do. Um, I haven't actually done them when I was younger. Uh, we've started doing them when I got, when I've gotten older, so. Well, it's funny you mentioned that, uh, friend from work, uh, he was just off a couple of days. He and his family went to Great Wolf Lodge. And the last time we went to Great Wolf Lodge, you were probably maybe three. Yeah, it was like way too small to go in the one one of those tubes. Like you can, yeah. can you remember the video where I was just like trying to get the yeah, handles? That was that was in the wave pool. You were you were kind of struggling there. Yeah, that's why I was in the shallow end, which was a good thing. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, they're they're definitely fun to do. Yeah. Um, mommy has a friend of hers who. Uh, what's it, Christmas Day or New Year's Day? One of the holidays, they tend to do a water park near us, and they've invited us a few times in the past. Yeah. Um, museums. Do you visit museums often in the cold months? Well. I'll take that as a no. <laughs> wow. I mean, we do visit, I don't know. Yeah, well, it's been a while since we've been to a legitimate museum, but we do go to them. We're not, you know, cultural swines. I think the last yeah. museum we went to was the Franklin Institute, wasn't it? Yeah. And that was fun. That was we did the uh, planetarium that time. Yeah. So it's always fun to do that. Um, fun to go to the art museum. Um, well, certain sections of the art museum. Well, I'm not big on yeah. modern art. 
but I love going to see the medieval armor and the medieval tapestries and the paintings and stuff. That's always very cool. Yeah. How about card tricks or magic tricks? Learning how to do card tricks. Well, when I was younger, I can definitely say I always wanted to sort of be into magic or you used do the to card do, tricks. Yeah, you used to be a big magician at the at the diner when you used to make the crowns disappear. Remember that? Um, yeah. Yeah, you used to take the little advertised, the little triangular advertisements and you do your magic tricks with that. Yeah. Um, planning a family vacation. Did we vacation in the winter ever? Well, not until this year, actually. We're uh, planning on going on vacation. Yes, we are. We will, we will be away for the holidays, which is kind of cool. I mean, like, I think it's after the holidays. We re- I only really remember going... Once in January, but that's not even really the holidays. And well, my birthday's not a holiday. Uh, I mean, <sighs> no, huh? Oh, wow. Well. Doesn't qualify. I didn't know we went for your birthday. That was the first time I was ever cold in Disney, though, which was kind of cool. Yeah. No pun was... intended. Yeah. So we had fun with that. Mm-hmm. Let's see what else. Uh, clean out old clothes and household goods that are no longer wanted. And donate them to a charity or sell them. So a little spring cleaning in the fall and winter, I think they're getting at here. And and donate stuff to a needy cause. Do we do that? I mean, we do that, like, kind of often, like, maybe every couple of months. Yeah, periodically throughout the year. Yeah. Who do we donate to, do you know? No. I think we donate to the Vietnam veterans. Maybe. Um. They're good guys. They come and they pick it up, so you don't even have to go and drop it off. Yeah. So try to support those guys. Uh, Swimming in an indoor pool. Have we ever done that? Besides the water park, obviously. Um, We can't really remember. Yeah, I don't think we have, unless it's a hotel. Yeah. You know, if we stay overnight at a hotel. I guess Great Wolf Lodge technically would qualify. Yeah. Uh, but they opened just recently by my work. They opened up an indoor swimming pool that was a swim school for kids, hmm. uh, which was neat because it was it's like a retail center, and they literally dug out a pool in the middle of the wow. what was like a store. Wow. You know? Like five years ago, it was a, it was a toy store. Oh, let's see. Take an art class. How does that sound to you? Taking an art class actually kind of sounds kind of. Actually, kind of sounds cool. Yeah, you're you're a bit of the artist there. Yeah. Does the does your school do anything uh, special? Any new clubs or anything like that in yeah, the winter and fall? Like, well, there's like winter sports, and I've noticed more clubs open up during the winter and fall months. Anything you're interested in? I mean, there was art club and um, the stage crew for drama club, but I didn't sign up because I just you didn't want to. Didn't want to sign up? I didn't, I don't know. One, I didn't really know how, and two, I didn't know how I'd feel about it. Okay. Well, you're not going to know until you join, right? I know. If you join, you can always walk away if you don't like it. I know. How about join a gym? You do exercise more in the winter? No. We'll move right on from that one. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Watch a play. I think we've done that before. Yeah, well, your school used to do that. They would go, your your old school, didn't they used to go to a play in Woodbury at the Broadway Theater there? Oh, well, yeah, when I was in, like, second grade, I think they yeah, did. Yeah, while ago. That was when I locked the keys in the car. I remember that. Why did you do that? It wasn't on purpose, sweetheart. No. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, visit a museum. Made, a, made the list twice here. I didn't realize that. Wow. Uh, how about hold board game or video game tournament? Have you ever thought of doing something like that? That might actually sound cool. That would be kind of cool. We used to do board game night when we were at the, in the apartment. We would yeah. do, do that, I think, Wednesdays we did that. Um, but that would be kind of neat, inviting your friends over to do board games or Especially to have a video Especially now game. that Aunt Chris got me the one game. Right. That would be fun. That would be cool. How about, this is, this is later in the winter, obviously, but how about plan and host... A Valentine's Day party. Ever ever done a Valentine's Day party? No. The main thing that happened on Valentine's Day was just giving cards and candy to others at school. You think you'd want to do a Valentine's Day party? Mm. 
So that's a no. Okay. I really don't know. I'm not the big person on love unless it's like friends and family, okay? <laughs> okay. I'm uh, sorry. I'm just not that. But Valentine's Day doesn't have to be about love. It can just be about friendship, too, you know? Okay, fair enough. So, uh, how about hosting a movie marathon? We've done that before. We have. Have we invited people over for it, though? Nope. <laughs> that would be kind of cool. Yeah, it would. And that That's not when we would want to host it in the backyard, though. It's a little cold out. Yeah. Summertime, we can do that, though. Yeah. With the projector and the sound yeah. bar and everything. You don't have it. We don't have, like, the screen, though. <sighs> no, but we can work on that. Yeah. Uh, and the last one that we have here is hold a slumber party. Do you do slumber parties? I've done... I've done them before. Um, I actually had one for my last, for my birthday one. That's true. And your birthday was technically in the fall. Yeah. So you like having slumber parties? Yeah. It's nice to like have your friends come over and then you like, I mean, I, I mean, at first glance, you don't really get the concept, but once you finally get into it, you understand like it's kind of fun, even though, you know. It's kind Screaming. of noisy, too. I know. I was about to say that for you. Yeah, you, you have a lot of noisy friends. Jeez. A lot, lot more noisy than trust I'm me, used to. I, trust me. I know. <clears throat> I know, Daddy. So that was all we had for our fun indoors. Is there any other indoor activities that you like to do for fun? Um. And watching YouTube videos does not qualify. I know, Daddy. I wasn't even going to say okay. that. Just checking. Um. Watching The Mandalorian. Really? <laughs> Wouldn't that qualify as movie marathon almost? I guess, if you watch all of them at once. Wow. Uh, so, no, huh? I can't really think of anything off all the right. top of my head. All right, well, we'll put an addendum in if you think of anything. All right. So let's move on when we come back to activities that teach life skills. And I think you'll find some of these interesting. All righty. So the first thing they have is start a small business. Now, I mentioned this because we have recently started talking about this as sort of a learning project. Yeah. Why don't you tell us sort of a little bit about what we were talking about with starting a business? Well, I'll quickly go over the reason on how we started doing this. So, Perfect. um, I started how ha- I like to have mayonnaise mixed in with my ketchup whenever I have certain meals like french fries, a burger, um, chicken wings, chicken nuggets, those kind of things. And you had recommended one time that um, if I were to actually manufacture the mixture, then um, I could become an entrepreneur and make money and um, start a business off of that. And then you had recommended mixing other condiments. So I think about two weekends ago, I think um, so, yeah. we had got we had bought a bunch of condiments, and we all, um, I think Saturday or Sunday morning, I think it was Saturday I think it was, morning. I think was it Saturday? It might have been Saturday. Maybe yeah. so Saturday morning, we all went downstairs and we made different combinations with different bases, and I wrote down the results of how we thought they were. And where'd we go from there with that? Um, so we would, we would have, we had three different bases, mayo, ketchup, and Caesar. Right. Hail Caesar. And yeah, I know. I'm actually learning about, I'm going to learn about him in history, by the way. <laughs> nice. So, um, and then we mixed it with six different condiments because I had six palettes. We had like one of my art palettes because I wasn't using them at the time. Right. So we just mixed it with that, um, and we all tried a small little bit, and we all rated it on a scale of 1 to 10. So we have some potential candidates that we might go to production with. Yeah, of course we didn't do ketchup and mayonnaise <coughs> because we already knew we were probably going to do that anyway. Already knew that was a winner. Yep. So, yeah, you can start a small business with, with stuff like that. You can register it and so forth. So teaches you how to sort of get things going, get them off the ground. Yeah. Uh, the next life skill they talk about is babysitting. Do you babysit or have you babysat? No. No. Would no. you be interested in doing that at some point, though? I mean, if I can handle my friend, if I can handle like a bun, like a bunch of fifth, 
fifth and fourth graders who are just completely noisy and out of control, then I think I can handle some kids. You think that's what the qualifier is? No. Okay. I mean, honestly, I've, I can like, I definitely think I could be baby, could babysit because I definitely think, um, um, oh my God. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> okay, well, I'll make sure I don't switch to that camera that just <laughs> fell. <laughs> oh, my God. So moving right along, back to our technical difficulties. Yeah, sorry about so that. So the next thing they talk about is um, volunteering to read to younger children at the library. Have you ever done that? Um, No, but I definitely think I could do that. I think that would be kind of cool because I know they were doing that in your school last year. To uh, the special needs kids, right? Yeah, um, we actually did that. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. And, like, I definitely know I can, like, go like this and show the picture while reading, which is kind of good. Right. Uh, how about building a website? I know you're starting to do that in school now. Is that something that interests you? Honestly, it would actually be a good way to show off my artwork to the world. I Absolutely, think. yeah. I mean, like, I actually just, like... Um, the website I was planning on making is, con I called it Art and Animation. Okay. And that's an N. Let's talk a little bit about that for a minute. So, um, I don't really have too many full-on details, but I definitely, um, I definitely have good concepts for it. So, it's basically a way on how I can teach others who want to get into animation, like, um, so how to make simple sketches and, um, how, and like, maybe I can, I also wanted to include like, uh, information on famous artists to help them out. And I could even help them find their art style if they needed help. And even the fact of how to animate their sketches, like make a cool little mini movie on it even though i'm still working on that myself um and so i actually have a main character for it as well okay um it's like and this was completely off of the top of my head it's this one cat character who um wears like a purple sh and white striped shirt with little with like a little um overall skirt and she's basically like gonna be the main icon of it does she have a name um uh i don't have the name off the top of my head but okay i'm pretty sure if i like found i would probably get a name by the but cool. for a bit uh the other one is to next one is we have is to volunteer at your community food pantry soup kitchen or church well church obviously isn't going to yeah. fly but uh, this was something Sam used to do when he was in high school he would volunteer for the food bank and uh, so I don't know if it was a food bank where they distributed food or if it was more of a soup kitchen type thing uh, but something like that where it gives you an appreciation for helping other people um, and it kind of gets you get you closer to, to people in need and allows you to solve some problems for folks yeah, and the thing is, my school was actually doing something like that. Like, they said, like, as long for every can of food that you bring in, um, you'd get a ticket, um, and you'd be entered in a raffle to win something. And every Friday, they double the tickets depending on how many cans you brought in. Like, if you brought in five cans, you get ten tickets. Um, okay. And I had actually brought in three cans. Um. So, on a Friday, so I would have gotten six tickets. Interesting. Well, that's interesting how they give a reward for it. Yeah. How about practicing budgeting skills? Do you do that? Um. You do, and you don't realize it. Yeah. Because you get money. You know, you do chores, you get money. So, you have an income. And then, you know, we did a podcast on financial responsibility already. No, we didn't. Well, we talked about responsibility. We talked about financial responsibility in the Responsibilities Podcast. Yeah. Um, and then you spend your money, right? So you go out shopping and stuff like that. So 
you take a portion of your money that you get each time, every other week, and you put that in the bank. That's practicing budget skills. Okay. So you do it, you don't realize it. Yeah. Uh, well, the next couple probably aren't going to apply. The next few probably aren't going to apply. So there's, to you at least, they may apply, may apply to our audience. Uh, there is take an online class. So obviously if you're a full-time student already, we don't recommend that. Yeah. There is visit a college, which you're not doing yet, but you will be doing in the next few years. More than likely. Uh, so you'll be visiting colleges to see if they offer the kind of environment and courses that you like. Uh, and there is a job shadow a professional. This is kind of a uh, precursor to an apprenticeship. Okay. Uh, where you go around, like if you want to do, I don't know, accounting or IT or... You know, a skilled labor thing like uh, carpentry or something. Uh, you would go around with, uh, you know, a professional who does that kind of work and you'd get a feel for the, the work that they do. You wouldn't get paid for it, but you would learn a lot from, from someone like that. Oh. Uh, this one is funny, and, and I left this one in here especially for you. Plan a digital detox. Do you know what that is? Nope. A digital detox is when you take a period of time and you disconnect. No TV, no internet, no phone, no video games, nothing. And you step away from technology and maybe you go for a nature walk or maybe you do a weekend retreat where you go camping without technology or you go read a book or something like that. You meditate and you step away from technology for a little bit. And I think all of us can do that. Obviously, I haven't sold you on that. Okay, moving right yeah, along. Clearly. Uh, let's I see. I mean, unless it's like, unless you let me do art. Right. Other than that, and the, well, that's another you. one. That's perfectly fine as long as it's not digital art. Okay, cool, because I don't do digital art. Yes, you do. You draw on your iPad all the time. That's digital art. No, I don't. What is Gosh of Life? That's not digital art. That's digital art. Yes, You're creating art digitally. By definition, that's digital art. You don't draw. Doesn't matter. Okay. This is digital art. All righty, I get it. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> uh, this next one here is one that you probably won't do for a little while, and that is to start filling out scholarship applications to get into college. Oh, great. That's a fun one. Um, how about starting a family challenge, like a weight loss challenge or something? Okay. Why? Like, why would the weight loss challenge? Just to motivate each other. Okay. What challenge would we do? I don't know. It may be who could go longest without technology. That's one. Uh, it could be who could read the most books over a period of time. Oh, great. Um, it could be, I don't know, a scavenger hunt that we do. Oh, that sounds fun. There'll be any number of things that you could do to have fun. And then the last one that they have in this category is participate in a fundraiser with friends. Have you ever done fundraisers for school or anything like that? I think I might have. I'm pretty sure you have because I've bought yeah. stuff. Yeah. Whenever you do a fundraiser, it always costs me money. Yeah. I remember those. Wow. So aside from that, are there any other uh, activities that teach life skills that you're involved in? Besides podcasting? <laughs> wow, Daddy. Well, it's true. Um, oh, yeah. There was actually the, um, the coat drive that it's at, that's going on in my school, like where kids donate like the coats that they aren't using. I haven't done it yet. There you I go. I haven't really done it. And it's like there were posters all over, and like you would donate coats for like families in need. That's another good one. Any kind of... Um, like sometimes there's gift wrapping. You volunteer to work at the mall to gift wrap for people and you make money for charity that way around this time of year too. Uh, I had a friend that used to do that. So lots of different things you can do out there. <laughs> so when we come back, I want to talk about more about what you do in the fall and the winter. And we'll talk about how we celebrate the holidays too. All righty. So where do you go? What are some of the things that you do? Um, we talked about going up the Shady Brook for the Halloween stuff and the Christmas lights. Let's talk a little bit about that. 
Alrighty, so Shady Brook, um, we actually, um, I remember going there, um, a few weeks ago, probably last month. Right. Um, and so we, so we have different things that we normally do there. One of my favorite things is one of the first things we normally do, where it's like, there's a little um, inflatable pillow, and you can jump, and depending on your age, you can jump on it, and you just have to make sure to stay clear of certain areas. It's honestly really fun. You get to jump around and just have a bunch of fun, but it's, it's definitely tiring for me. It's gotten tiring over the years. And this isn't like a bounce house. This is out outside. It's not enclosed, and yeah. it's this big, huge pillow that's built into the ground. Yeah. So... How about their Christmas lights? What are their Christmas lights like? Oh, they're actually really cool. Like, I remember f- a few years I would actually, like, just stick my head out of the car. Um, the sunroof. Yeah, the sunroof. And I would just see, like, I remember one of the first things you'd see was the version of um, the 12 Days of Christmas. Right. With all the different animals. First you see the partridge in the pear tree, then the two turtle doves, and then you just see more you just see the repeated ones. There was all. It was also always fun to go o- over the fish jumping. O- right. Over. So they'd have the arc light. So it's a drive-through light display, right? Yeah. And you drive through real slow. There's two lanes of traffic, and it takes about I don't know what twenty minutes, twenty thirty minutes to get through the whole thing. About so. And uh, some of the ones you've got uh, uh, arc. Uh, lights that go over that are animated. Yeah. So you have fish jumping over you, and you. What the other one was like a snowball. I think maybe. And then they had the big tunnel lights that you would go through. Oh yeah, that's always cool. That was kind of cool. And there's all and there's like the Jack and the Beanstalk one, which is one of the longest ones and also one of the coolest to watch. Yeah. And they had like the Seven Wonders of the World. You'd see the pyramid. You'd see the Colosseum. Um, just a, a really interesting collection of different lights that uh, they're all custom made. They make them all, you know, themselves there. Uh, and and when you get done, you can go and park and you can do, they have a farmer's market there. They have a Christmas village. You can go see Santa. Uh, one of the things we like to do is get um, hot chocolate and, yeah. and marshmallows and we roast them there, right? Yeah, we roast them. Yeah, we roast them. Uh, except for that one year when it rained. Yeah. Um, so what kind of home activities do we do? Um, what's the one time? One, what's the one thing that we make this time of year that we bake together? Cheesecake. Right, Mom's cheesecake. Yeah. Which we'll probably be doing at some point this weekend, so we have them for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So let's talk about Thanksgiving. All righty. So, what do we do on Thanksgiving? Well, normally for Thanksgiving, um, we would drive three hours to go. <laughs> it's not three hours. It may feel like it, but it's literally like 45 minutes. Okay, 45 minutes. <laughs> and where do we go? Um, we go to Gma's house. Gma's house, yes. And um, depending on the t- depending on the year, we would have different... We would have different relatives come. Mm-hmm. And depending on the year or the amount of people, I should say, we would see Gma's cat. Yes. Yes. And what's her cat's name? Big Paul's. Big boy. Big boy. And why is he called that? Because he's really big. Because he's a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's in the name. Yeah. And and it's neat because she's got like the little shelves around, and the cat runs on all the shelves yeah, up on the wall and stuff. Yeah, you can just see that. And one of my favorite things to do is like I remember last year I would just go in the area where you could get drinks and snacks, and I would just sit in the one swing there and just have like Big Boy come in a couple times, and he would sit with me, and we would just rock. Yeah, back on the patio there. Yeah. So, do we take day trips? Where do we take day trips this time of year? Besides Shady Brook. Oh, um. So we'll do. Smithville. Smithville's a good one. Yeah. So tell us about Smithville. Okay, so Smithville is like this collection of stores that you can go to. Um, and there's like all sorts of different stores you can go to. There's that one bonfire, the small bonfire there that you can roast marshmallows. And there's also another side where there's like a toy store and like the Irish. 
um, one that you normally right. like to go to. And there's actually... And um, if you stay there late enough, you'll be able to see a uh, Christmas show where Christmas music plays and you just see different Christmas trees lit up at different times choreographing with the music, and it's really cool. Right, so it's a historic little village just outside Atlantic City, New Jersey. And uh, it's two signs. One is one is an older, old-style uh, buildings that they have there. The other is a little bit more modern. And it's separated by a lake in the middle that you get to yeah. walk across the bridge. And the trees that are the dancing light trees are actually floating out in the in the lake. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. And they're timed to music. And they pipe the music in every hour. And you can see little uh, light shows and stuff like that. Uh, there's usually Santa's there. And they've got a big giant Christmas tree there. They've yeah. got the, the trains decorated up for Christmas. They've got a carousel there. It's, it's a really great, great little place to take the kids and, and have a good time out there. Get some hot chocolate and and just really soak in the ambiance. Uh, we do Peddler's Village up in Pennsylvania, too. Tell us about Peddler's Village. Okay, so Peddler's Village is um, a little bit different to um, Smithville. It's like just where, it's like a small town where you just... It's kind of similar, actually. So you could just walk around, you see different buildings, and uh, there's actually, like, a main area where there's always that one water fountain we always go to see the fish. And one time we actually saw a turtle, and we just took a picture of me right. with the turtle in my hand. Yeah. Yeah. And they usually have the guys there with the hot cider, mm -hmm. where they're warming it up in the fire out there. Yeah. So we like to do that. Uh, they light, they do their own Christmas lights there. They do a beautiful light show there. Uh, nice little place to go, pick up little odds and ends, little knickknack stuff. A lot yeah. of, a lot of very unique little shops there. And they've got oh, for the kids, they've got Gingleberry oh, yeah. Fair, right? Yeah. And it's like, I can remember, um, going there and there's like this really cute little area for like younger kids. Unfortunately, I'm too old, but, um, younger kids where it's like, a little water thing where you can use like little rubber duckies and um, you can stop water flowing and it's like a really nice place for kids to be creative. Yeah. There's also an arcade that we went to and I can remember I was just spamming like the one candy game because you just got like free like you you win every time and you just get a bundle of candy and I just kept spamming it because <laughs> I just wanted candy and I like couldn't win in the, any other in any of the other claw games. So. And they've got a big carousel there as well. They have a, yeah. a ball bounce sort of thing there. And there's also an um an area where you can buy prizes at the arcade. Right. The arcade. So let's talk holidays. So we already talked about what we do for Thanksgiving. What do we do? Do we do any other holidays this time of year? Yes, we do two different holidays around, and sometimes they take place around the same time. So which? What are those holidays? Well, one is a Christian holiday. One is a Jewish holiday. Could you name them? <laughs> Christmas and Hanukkah. There we go. Yeah. So, and typically, you know, we do our uh, candles for Hanukkah, right? Yep. And I've actually started lighting the candles now because I'm old enough. Yes, you are. So we have three menorahs that we work with. So each one gets a different menorah each night. We have, yep. what do we have? The candle one, right? Yeah, we have the regular candle one. We have a electric one where you turn, it's a pretty old one, so you would, tur would turn the little things and eventually they'd light up. Mm -hmm. And then we have a the newest model, which is a sort of Minecraft version of it, where you just press the little buttons. Right. And the most them modernized up. version. Right. And what are some of the things that we do for Hanukkah? Well, um... On the first night of Hanukkah, we'd normally like make lakas and all the sorts of Jewish food, and we'd also have a cake, and we would have jelly donuts. Cause what's a latka? A latka is basically a potato pancake. Um, I definitely know I don't like them. Like I've tried year and year again, and I still don't like them. And I don't know why. I love mommy's latkes. I don't know. Like they're just potatoes that are fried. Like flat well, there's potatoes. more because there's there's well, different yeah, ingredients spices in them. And yeah. stuff. I think the the spices are the main problem. I've just never taken a fan of them. But so we sold you on the jelly donuts, though. Yeah, and we always we also have sour cream and apple juice, Ab apple applesauce. Sauce. Yeah, that I actually mainly have the applesauce because yeah. that's the only thing I'll actually eat. <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of. 
Oh, yeah. So and we do exchange gifts. One one president and I usually yeah. you know something small, something fun we can play with. Yeah. Uh, so you can keep playing. What games do we do for Annika? Well, there's the dreidel game, which is always fun. Yeah. Um. So there are different. Um. I'll quickly explain how to play the dreidel. Please do. So. The, a dreidel is like a spinning top, and there are four different sides to it. And each sign, and each side has a different sign, and each sign, and each sign means a different thing. So there's um, none, which means okay. Ugh, sorry. I, so you all. Ugh, my God, Go ahead, just slow down, take a breath. Okay, so the way you play the game is that everyone has one dreidel, or or you just, share one, or you share one. And there are golden coins that have chocolate in them. Usually we just reuse the chocolate so we can't actually eat anything unless... Which is like, called gelt. Yes. Monica the, gelt. And um, we all start off with a with an equal amount and have some in the middle. Right. So um, each person would take a turn spinning, probably starting from youngest to old, then to oldest. Usually. Yeah. And the four different sides... Or prettiest to least pretty, and then I wind up spinning last. <laughs> Wow, Daddy. Okay, so there are four different symbols. The first one I'm going to go over with is the nun. Right. Basically Noon. meaning nun. Noon. Whatever. And it's... Yeah, whatever. <laughs> sure. Whatever. And it basically means nun. So the aim of the game is to basically get the most guilt. Right. So if you get nun, you don't get to put anything in your thing. Okay, so... So you spin the dreidel, the dreidel lands, and whatever side is facing up is the symbol that you get. Yeah, and there's another one which is called shin, and isn't that like you take half? Shin, I think, is half. So you take half of what's in the pit. Right. With he... Then the next one is hay. Hay. No, yeah. hay is half, shin is put, isn't it? Oh, we have to ask Mommy. Shin is if we do we need to phone a friend? Is that what Should we? we have to do? No. Okay. Shin is half. Shin is put. Yeah. So Shin. Hay is half. Yeah. And what do you get to take all? Gimel. Gimel. Yeah. Gimel Everyone, means give me it all, right? Yeah. Gimel is like the thing you always want. And I can remember one time, like, I actually want. I actually ended up drawing the different signs of of the dreidel. Like I drew. Two of them were girls and two of them were boys. I think Gimel and Shin were boys and Hay and Nun were girls. So we'll probably do a podcast when we get, because Hanukkah's late this year. Yeah. We will probably do a podcast later uh, just on Hanukkah. In fact, I think we'll probably be on vacation when we do it or the week before. Maybe. So we'll actually fact check all the speculation that we have on the game. And uh, come back with that and other important details. Yeah. But we also celebrate Christmas. Yep. And we're pretty straightforward when it comes to Christmas. Yeah, we don't really do anything special. We don't decorate. We get a Christmas tree. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's about it. And we always have the fire on the fire. The fire, the, the, the Yule log. Yeah, on the TV in the living room. So... But that's sort of what we do in the winter and fall for our activities. And like I said, we'll probably have a holiday special. Uh, in fact, we will, and I'll, I'll, I'll plug it now. Yeah. One of the things that we're working on uh, that I don't think we've told you yet is we're going to be doing our own version of Twas the Night Before Christmas for the podcast. Oh, my God. So, And we'll be playing that uh, probably Christmas Day when we're not live, but we'll be We'll be broadcasting that. Oh my that. God! How are we gonna do that? So, well, I, you know, it's gonna be a surprise. I can't let it all let let the cat out of the bag yet. But we have an idea of what we're gonna do. Alrighty, that's a surprise for me and you both, guys. See, so there you go. So uh, we'll come back. We'll get your closing remarks because I'm out of stuff to talk about right now, and yeah. uh, maybe some shout outs. Go for closing remarks. Alrighty, so I don't really know how to close, how to put closing remarks, because there's no real deep message in this one. I guess just have fun this winter and fall season and try to spend it with your family. Fair enough. Any shout outs? I guess I'll give a shout out to my entire family. 
Okay, well that's pretty broad. Sure, what? we'll go with that. Look, I get to see, <laughs> I get to see most of them during um, uh, Thanksgiving, and this year is kind of the season for giving. There you, know? you go. So and it's always important to um, talk about my family and friends. You know, I'll even throw my friends out there. There you throw your friends under the bus too. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's all we have for today. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? Um, I guess just how you can find us is all we can. That's really a good say. idea. So, to email us because we want to have we want to get your feedback, you can yep. email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on Twitch live <laughs> Friday nights at eight at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can get us at Facebook. You know what our Facebook is? Facebook.com uh, slash insights into, into things podcast. podcast. Yeah, I don't really know too much on this. Okay. I'll just run down these then to make it easier. Okay. You can get us on uh, Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get the audio version of the podcast at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can get the video podcast on YouTube at youtube.insightsintothings.com. Or you can get all of this along with transcripts and show notes and all of our episodes on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, which are Insights into Entertainment, done with you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, done with you and Sam, a monthly podcast. Yes. While the other two are weekly. Yes. I think that's all we had. Yep. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.